Evaluating Research Concepts Examining in Internal and External Validity This will be a short video describing a few elements relevant to the evaluation of research and articles about research. The visual you see is my attempt to illustrate that validity is not a yes-no kind of proposition and that using the phrase the degree to which dot 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 helps illustrate that. In the visual, you can also see that examining internal and external validity separately is fundamental to assessing the validity of the research itself. Note that the video is meant as an introduction to evaluating research in health sciences and thus is not meant to be comprehensive. So here we have a closer look at the image. And I will start by focusing on internal validity. Internal validity is the degree to which claims made about participants are true. And what I've done below that is I've broken up internal validity into three separate sections. Similarly to many textbooks. We have information bias, selection bias, and confounding. We'll take a closer look at each of the subsets of information bias, selection bias, and confounding right now. Information bias, also known as misclassification, if it's a, cla if it's a categorical variable. We have uh, subset A, recall and or compliance. Subset B, interviewer or observer bias. And sec subset B, measurement error. And D, data analysis, so error in data analysis. So each of these can be uh, assessed as either present or absent, or can be assessed in a matter of degrees. Recall bias has to do with uh, surveys or other means of collecting data in which people are asked to remember what they ate or what they did many years or many months ago. Compliance has to do with experiments or other uh, cohort studies in which uh, people are asked to participate in, uh, keep track of uh, food that they eat uh, over uh, in a prospective nature. Interviewer and observer bias has to do with specifically in experiments uh, blinding or other ways that interviewers or observers may introduce bias by the ways they ask questions or by the way by the things they're looking for if they're observing. Measurement or error I think is pretty clear so if a machine or some kind of um, other means of measurement is in error. And so each of these, and data analysis, uh, I think is pretty straightforward. It could be the wrong data analysis for the job. Selection bias can be either for internal or external validity. Within ex internal validity, the selection of controls. So if controls are somehow selected in a biased way, then that can mess up the internal uh, validity. Non-response bias, so these are the well-known missing values that we don't really know what to do with very often. Confounding. Confounding can take a place in many ways and it's kind of hard to assess unless you uh, know the, the theme of the research pretty well or the context within the research which with, within which the research is taking place. So one way of confounding, uh, we look at whether the treatment group and the control group are equivalent and whether that's discussed by the researchers or by the, uh, in the research article. Loss to follow-up, also we look at the discussion of loss to follow-up to assess whether the researchers have done a good job in dealing with potential confounders. Now what you see that for each of these I've drawn a box and in the boxes you, you can either put check marks to say yes or no, check mark yes it's okay and then we see how many check marks and then the idea is the more check marks the higher the internal validity of this the research that you're assessing. External validity the degree to which participants are representative of the target population and 
I've broken it up into two themes, description and selection bias. So description basically has to do with the extent to which the researchers have done a good job describing the population, target population, or in a broader sense, the population to whom the research findings are supposed to be generalized, and then a description of the sampling. And you can also uh, assess the sampling at this point. Selection bias, well, if we have self-selection, if people self-select into a uh, study, then that's a huge problem for uh, external validity because volunteers are very often different from non-volunteers. Restriction bias has to do with inclusion, exclusion criteria, and those can be assessed as to whether they are appropriate to the population that's described in, in one, number one. Non-response bias, non -response bias again has to do, so similarly uh, we have the same thing up here in, um, for missing values and internal validity and non-response bias is kind of the same thing. People who choose not to respond to certain questions, well, we don't have the data for them. If there's too many of those, then really that has an effect not only on internal validity but on external validity. And again, each of these is assessed as present or absent, or you can put a, a score from 0 to 5. You can do it in various ways. But the idea is that validity is pretty complex until you start breaking it up into its subsections. Hopefully this is helpful. I look forward to your feedback.